Naples, criminal center of Europe, motherland of Neapolitan mafia which is known as Camorra. I think that Camorra is a certain type of Italian mystification. Another investigation of unsolved crimes newspaper. How old is it? Did it ever stop existing? When? It never happened. Largest center of drug trade. Place of gangs and street crime. How long does it take to put things in order in Naples? Couple of minutes? Who and for what reason had created a structure which keeps you know southern inland part of Italy? If you take a look at Garibaldi and what he thinks, it will be clear that he is nothing but a criminal. Just the way Nangaloza is. Simple as that. What is the relation between Neapolitan and South African criminal traditions? In Cape Flats, 26th, 27th and 28th behave themselves just as Camorra in Naples. And it doesn't claim for politics, it doesn't claim for power, it doesn't need it. What it claims for is money. What makes the legendary Camorra in reality? In this documentary, in the series of episodes dedicated to research of Italian criminal tradition, me as a journalist, I am not going to make conclusions on the subject of investigation. I am certain that the hypothesis which will come to by the end of the program will not be supported by Italian government officials, neither by representatives of law enforcement bodies, neither by members of present-day Camorra. For that matter, there is nothing surprising in this. For government and police, it might not be advantageous to accept this kind of hypothesis. As for Camorra, they might not even know how, when and for what tasks that very Camorra was organized. To start with a paradox which is not brought to attention by many, from one side, in Naples there are highest markers related to robbery in Italy. From the other side, while filming them, head of the Division of Criminal Investigations of Naples, Vittoria Pisani, makes a direct statement to Vladimir Posner that during the last 15 years, situation in Naples has significantly improved. Almost all heads were convicted, there were many who were convicted for murder, Many criminal organizations are going through hard times. And it is evidenced by the fact that in the last years the number of murders has fallen down. It turns out that the first figures of Camorra are arrested. But Naples stays as before as one of the most criminal cities in Europe. In such a case, who does organize the activity of Neapolitan Mafia clans? To whose advantage it is for Camorra to continue its activity? I took a decision to ask for help from an expert criminologist, my friend, my teacher and mentor, Dr. Oleg Maltsev. I think that Camorra is a certain type of Italian mystification. How old is it? Did someone ever stop its existence? When? It never happened. I mean, yes, people always tried fighting against Camorra. However, no one set a task to seize its activity. And what do we mean by saying fight against Camorra? Well, there is a police out, so let them do their job. That's their job to fight against Camorra. Imprison its members and things, but Camorra by itself continues its activity as it did before. Obviously, yet the first question of our experts challenges commonly accepted viewpoint about Camorra. For this reason, in the very beginning of the investigation, I suggest you to put aside for a moment stereotypes you might have in regard to this organization. Take a look at the facts and try answering questions which are going to be posed in the course of the investigation.
Basically, things that I'm asking now, never thought about. Well, that's Kamora, can't talk about it. But what Kamora is? Kids on motorbikes? Watch a movie by Posner, they're Italy, Naples. They were crying when they took down the American. These two kids who worked for an American, they were crying. When they were arrested and brought to Pisani's office, believe me, they've been crying all the time. Starting from the moment their arrest was protocoled. Almost like little boys, two kids, crying. So the police special divisions, they're struggling against these people? Who are they struggling against? Tell us. Who do you see? People on scooters, on bikes, that are stealing photo cameras? Is that a serious organization? Needless to say, members of Camorra move beyond stealing personal belongings of tourists. But today, activity of Camorra for most of people is directly associated with street crime. Besides, at the same time, there is real Camorra, legendary and mythological organization of people of honor. Which one is real Camorra of these two? Or may it be that today's members of Camorra do not know much about original goals and philosophy of their organization. Mafia and Drangheta are two organizations that strive to have a control over society. Basically, that's an anti-government. As for Camorra, it has different organization. It is not an organization against government, but it is designed to commit crimes with the sole goal of financial gain. Piacere strana, a essere odiata per versione del buono aglione con fiera mano. Io ogni tatuaggio so gocce sangue incorniciato. E non lo vado da ballare ma faccio due pezzi, cago sangue commerciale. Aggredimo. For members of Camorra, strife for benefit and gain doesn't change. It is the same as it was many years ago. For instance, Giuseppe Garibaldi, who is one of the heroes of mythological Camorra, was a pirate. If you take a look at what Garibaldi thinks in certain people, it will be clear that Garibaldi is nothing but a criminal. Just the way Nongoloza is. Simple as that. Garibaldi is a disturbing character. He is not as honest and controllable as most people think. Sadly remembered, abstraction of treasure house is a bright example to this. Here what the first king of United Italy, Vittorio Emanuele II, said about Garibaldi of Camorra. This being provided, why then government did not only accept the fact of existence of the pirate Giuseppe Garibaldi, but had an active cooperation with him? Vittoria Pisani is a peculiar figure in Naples. Even though he is considered to be a sonder of mafia, there is no member of Camorra who would be speaking disrespectful of him. Yet another phenomenon of Camorra is a character of relationship with police officials. With the guidance of Vittoria Pisani, there were arrests organized and implemented practically of all leading figures of Camorra. It would be reasonable to assume that Pisani is an intimate enemy of Camorra. However, here in Naples, the logic does not work. As Triana told me, Pisani is free and safe to walk around on streets without bodyguards. No one will touch him. For what reason, one who sent to prison leaders of Camorra, which caused loss to Neapolitan Mafia, is untouchable for Camorra. Evidently, it would be hard for us to find answers to all these question marks. For this reason, we are going to take a journey into medieval times. According to classical history, in the first part of 16th century, there is an appearance of Franciscan monks on the territory of Naples which is not a surprise. As you remember from our previous investigations, Franciscans form uttermostly powerful intelligence service structure of Charles V, 
They were ones who provided the firmness of Spanish crown's power on conquered territories. Franciscan training center was set in Palermo. It has to be pointed as well that these people were outstanding in handling blade weapons. However, in the frameworks of this investigation, it is much more important to look at their activity on territory of Naples. Let's take a look at the fragment of the Mark Ferraro's book, Bandits, Knives and Sticks. In the basis of the book, there are materials from Neapolitan Library Archives. A few priests used to teach combat techniques in secret, which they were taught in their communities. Obviously that those bandits are representatives of Neapolitan criminal tradition, predecessors of that very Camorra. Foremost question of the investigation looks in the following manner. For what reason Franciscan monks have prepared Neapolitan bandits for military acts? Currently I'm working and researching Neapolitan fencing and you know there is a strange thing about it. It is there but at the same time as if it doesn't exist. People don't know about it. In this part of investigation we are going to work according to emotional skills. In the course of at least 300 years, if there is a criminal organization in the territory of Naples which commits crime attacks in order to benefit, they had to use certain system of blade work. Neapolitan school of fencing became a counter system for the whole Italy in 18th century. Frenchmen came supposedly in 18th century and established French standard which devastated all fencing schools of Italy. That is what is written in official sources, that is being a certain starting point where we see that Neapolitan school has remained. And what stands behind its preservation is because it was a counter system school by its nature, it was a criminal system. It is not known much about Neapolitan school of fencing, regardless the fact that there are treatises of 18th century which made it to our days. For Anna Filipova, assistant of Dr. Maltsev, translation of Neapolitan treatises on fencing is not a first scientific work of this kind. With the guidance of Dr. Maltsev, Anna had translated five Venetian and two ancient Spanish treatises on fencing. You may ask any master and they will say that that's the way it is, but no one knows the essence. In such kind of cases what might help is science. There is no other way that this type of puzzles could be resolved. For this very reason, in Research Institute The Memory and Research Institute Criminalistic Studies, with the guidance of Dr. Maltsev, there was done a large-scale work on translation of ancient treatises with the purpose of the study of Neapolitan fencing school. The system itself is constructed by highly intelligent individuals. We take 20 sources and gather elements, moves, everything which has relation to Neapolitan fencing. Well, it has to be said that these books were not written for common people. I mean, these books were for nobility, for ones who had wanted to be in power, for ones who, were, who would become generals, admirals, captains and so forth. Meaning they are not for ones who drift and do not manage their own fates. With the guidance of scientist Dr. Maltsev, Kanekator Sunbayeva the scientific translation of ancient treatises on fencing as well. One of her remarkable works is the translation from Spanish into Russian of medieval Spanish treatise Greatness of the Source by Don Luis Pachica de Narvaez. Besides, Kaneke had translated a number of Spanish treatises and two 18th century treatises on Neapolitan fencing. I think that Neapolitan school of fencing is highly efficient by itself, alongside with Palermitanians. These are two outmost effective schools which exist today in Europe.
Я не беру потому что она как бы отец она породила обе школы, как бы, и это эти двух школ. Но эти две школы, они как бы очень мощные сами по себе. Needless to say, Neapolitan style has enormous relation to Spain, because in the bases there are a lot of Spanish elements. To be exact, Spanish strikes, footwork, wristwork, I mean all this is characteristics of Spanish system. People that rode the treatises, they were like holy people of fencing in those times. These very people, they understood that they ought to prove that it is a fundamental science. As even back in those times, there were a lot of commoners who did not believe in it, who were taking attempts to discredit them in some manner. So they were conscious that this type of people have to be explained in a certain and special manner. Logical models of the system indicate to the fact that it has Spanish South African origin. In other words, unicorn, tiger, eagle and a wolf is a mixture of Norman and South African systems. Two models are Norman and other two African. Venerate Simone Mano, guardi, proprio piacere strana A essere odiate, perversione, un buono aglione, con fiera e mana E ogni tatuaggio, so gocce di sangue, incorniciato E non lo calo, da ballamo in faccia, tu che pensi, che ha cosa anche commerciale Aggredimo che fa fronte a ruina, fianco e fianco, chi strogo non sono A due cadavra, diventano note, reincarnazione Today, the most important business is drug trafficking Besides the fact that there is a lot of drugs being used right here in the city, Naples is the center of drug traffic. The problem isn't that the poverty, very low social cultural level, push young men to the side of criminal world. About 20% of average members of Camorra cannot read and write. If one takes any film on Camorra, thinks that will be in there is about that poverty is the main engine of Camorra. Likewise in Cape Town, poverty is the main engine of crime. Pay attention towards strange coincidence. It indicates towards strange relation of Neapolitan criminal tradition and South African criminal tradition. Cape Flats is also the center of drug trafficking. Same poverty and low level of education. Structure, rules and logical models of martial arts indicate towards the same origin as well. Speaking of South African criminal tradition, I mean they are twin brothers with that tradition. When we say Nangaloza, Nangaloza cult, like if we translate it into Russian language, it would be one who is deprived of his right, someone who is kicked away from a ship, from a team. Turning to number gangs of Cape Town, there are enough films and books. With the guidance of scientist Dr. Maltsev, there was an extensive research of South African criminal tradition, which has, needless to say, Spanish origins. If you compare preparation of 26th, 27th, 28th, you will see that they have the same model of training. And if it's the same model of training, by looking at what basically connects them, we are left only with Spain. At the same time in the movie there, Italy, Vittoria Pisani remembers a case when one of the arrested criminal authorities of Camorra transfers for an unknown reason million liras to help starving kids in Africa. That meaning actually took place many years ago. It was a year of 1998. We had a half an hour talk with that head of Camorra in my office. He was a head of Camorra by that time. Currently he is in the prison. At that time we looked out for him but couldn't find. And when we finally found him we searched his flat and brought him to police station.
Я взял у него отпечатки пальцев, и мы начали разговаривать. I took his fingerprints, and we have started our conversation. He told that people die starving in here. Я даю им наркотики на продажу. At my own block, I give drugs to sell, and they all live decent lives. But what can government offer them? Then he took out a receipt from his pocket, money transfer he made, million liras to help children in Africa. He said, I know that I'm a criminal, but I try doing good things. And today I feel to have fulfilled my duty because I've sent million liras to Africa to help starving kids. In Cape Flats, 26th, 27th, 28th behave themselves just as Camorra does in Naples. It is a standalone criminal organization. It doesn't claim for politics. It doesn't claim for power. It doesn't need it. What it claims for is money. Here we face reasonable question about interrelation of two criminal traditions, Neapolitan and South African. No one can find an answer to this question. For now there is no historical evidence and we have looked up and down and did not find an evidence of relationship. But there is one thing which binds them for sure, and that is the sea. I think what has to be compared is not South African tradition and Neapolitan, but two types of pirates. Basically, both of the sides have pirate schools and that what associates them. So it is not about Naples and Cape Flats resembling each other. And again pirates. In such a case, what stands behind ages of cooperation between a state and pirates? Why was stumble upon in history on such examples as Giuseppe Garibaldi? One of the ways to answer this question can be found in the book of Marco Ferrara, where one will find a quote of the first king of United Italy, Vittorio Emmanuel II. It is not enough to eradicate enemies in the south. One is ought to mutilate them and throw them into a slow fire. It is necessary to eradicate southern population or send them to Africa so that they become civil. Think of this, the region that we are looking at now is a lifelong center of revolutionary movement of Italy. At this point many things fit together. In the years since Spartacus uprising, over a number of years it makes up a risky region for central Italian government. This provided it becomes clear why Franciscan monks, nobility and military people had to teach blade work and art of fencing to Neapolitan criminals. There is only one goal possible, which is protection of the territory from break attempts and organization of revolutionary uprisings. It has to be noted that this is not a unique hypothesis. During World War II, large numbers of prisoners of Soviet prisons were sent to battlefield. Obviously that central government and heads of certain divisions had no choice but to teach military art to representatives of Russian criminal tradition. It is time to make conclusions and reveal the hypothesis which is going to be not agreeable to many. Nevertheless, this conception gives an explanation to many paradoxes, myths and legends around Camorra. I think that Camorra is a certain safety barrier formed by central power. This is my subjective opinion as a journalist, as an expert. I've looked into Camorra since long, and I did not find any other designation but this. Is it a sensational hypothesis? Don't think so. It might be surprising only to ones who don't know history well. In one of the treatises of 18th century of Neapolitan fencing it is stated, to Signor Martini Cosia, 
to a judge of royal crown and three times general government commissioner, an extensive power is conveyed to civil and criminal power. In other words, it is a certain structure which is created by central government of Italy, which simply controls the southern part of the state with the purpose of prevention of occurrence of any type of political movements. Obviously that with this hypothesis everything fits together. As for central government of Italy, obviously this position is advantageous for it. Provided someone attempts to start a revolution in the south of Italy, first ones who will be opposing it would be members of Camorra. All understand that after any revolutionary uprising, there is a modification of not only secular high society power, but as well as criminal power. Apparently, these changes are not advantageous to Camorra. In this very point, interests of government and Camorra are in full accordance. It is a big fiction and mystification. I mean, the street crime can always be set loose to an extreme extent. If street crime is not under a tight control, it will get loose, and this is the case in Naples. In the framework of this hypothesis, the phenomenon of the head of criminal investigations division, Vittoria Pisano, also becomes clear. For representatives of Camorra, there is no point in organizing assassination act in relation to Pisano, and absolutely it is disadvantages. Otherwise, their relationship with central government may deteriorate. But when there is imbalance and Pisani reminds his childhood friend about the raid, he loses his position and gets an open criminal case against him. It is profitable to have balance for government as well as for Camorra. Central government in Rome, I think, would seem it very profitable to have such an organization in there. Organization which can eliminate anyone who would try to pursue political interests instead of business one in that region. In such cases, specialists say that the subject of the talk is about manageable construction. Needless to say, on the territory of the city, which is twice smaller than the city of Odessa, it is not formidable to bring order and destroy Camorra. But no one does this for some reason. I think the answer is right on the surface. For any government, it is always profitable to have on the territory powerful, criminal, but manageable structure instead of struggling with the criminal and revolutionary sprouts every day at the same time. Cazzo! Via, via!